Numbers chapter 15, verse 38 through 41. And you're going to see that in the Old Testament they were commanded to, to wear uh, a, it was a shawl that they wore that went over their neck and had four sides on it. We'll talk about it in a little bit. It had, it had tassels that ran down through it. It had these things called uh, tizzets. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Uh, and I'll explain that in just a minute. It, it hunts from four corners. So whichever direction they face, they were supposed to remember God's love, his commandments. So we'll read the, the 38 to 41 in uh, Numbers 15. And it's uh, 38, yeah, 38 through 41. And then uh, we'll read the, we'll go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 and 22 after that. So speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribband of blue. So they had this uh, shawl, I call it a shawl, that goes over their head that might hang all the way down, down to here. If we have time, I have a, a little video I could show you of a, of a Jewish person showing how they wore the, the shawl and what it looked like. So they had tassels on, the, on, on, their, on their clothes. It says, speak unto the children of Israel and bid... Oh, I'm sorry, I read that verse already. <laughs> Next one. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And there's a significance of the way they tie the knots. You're going to find out there's, uh, I don't know if you knew this, there's 613 laws, uh, some uh, commandments to do and some commandments to don't uh, in the Bible. And, and that, that will tell them the way they tie that knot and the way it adds up, it adds up to 613. We'll get to that in just a minute. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you use to go a whoring. That you remember that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. So those fringes were there to remind you to remember his commandments. We don't do commandments to be saved, but we do commandments because we are saved now. It's, it's, uh, we look at it different. Okay, verse. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. So there we see, I just wanted to get the basis of why they had a, a shawl and why they had fringes there. So we move up a couple thousand years to Matthew chapter 9, and we'll look at verse 20 and 22. And these are familiar, uh, should be familiar with each of you. And then we'll go down to, after this, we're going to go to Matt, uh, stay in Matthew and look at verse Chapter 14, verse 36. But verse 20 says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. So when she touched that tassel or the talent on his garment, did that make her whole? No, it was her faith that made her whole. It wasn't the, the object. It was her faith in Christ that made her whole. And again, we'll see in uh, chapter 14 of Matthew, verse 36, we'll see that, I don't know if you caught this before, but we'll see that other people did the same thing, touched the hem of his garment, and they were healed as well. Uh, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. So uh, many people touched the hem of his garment, and through their faith, not of the, not of the magic power of the, the garment, but through their faith in Christ, they were made whole. So in both of those passages there in Matthew, uh, we're told that people uh, were being healed just by uh, touching the hem of the, the garment. When we think of that kind of clothing worn by men of those days, we know that men wore long, flowing robes. We think of the hem as being the very bottom portion of the, the robe, the part nearest the ground. We get the picture of the woman with the issue of blood stooping down to the ground and touching the bottom of his robe. But we'll, we'll look at it a little bit different. I think he might have, they might have been touching the, 
It's called a tizit, T-I-Z-T-I-Z. I'll, I'll let you know how to spell it. It's, when I get here, this, I can't hardly pronounce it, but it's, it's a tizit. Okay. Uh, so this garment that they wore was called a tallet. Okay, and the word hem means a fringe, a tassel, or a border of a garment. Now you notice back in uh, Numbers 15, verse 38, it says for them to make fringes on the border of their garments. The word fringe means the same thing as a, a hem or a tassel, okay? Uh, in ancient times, a man's clothing was essentially a long rectangular cloth that draped down over the body, four corners at the bottom, and the Israelites would attach tassels to the four corners of the garment. And the hem in blue, look at the hem blue, uh, if you look at the very last word there, it's supposed to be blue. It's interesting how they got the color blue, and I can't hardly wait to get there, but uh, they use a certain kind of snail called a, a music. And there's another scientific name after that, but they use a music in order to get that blue. It, it's amazing how they knew how to do it. It had to come from God. Because if you look at this snail, they would take uh, a, uh, a part of that snail, a part of their intestines, and it would dry it out, and it would be yellow. I have a video of it. I can't hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs> it shows how it did it, and it goes down in that liquid, and you know what makes it blue? The sun. I thought, oh, that's so awesome. The sun makes the color of the, this special color blue. The sun makes gives us a new color in our life. I thought that's so awesome. That's so awesome. But anyway, I hope they let you see that. Okay. Uh, so the, the garment is called the talent, which they've used for thousands of years. And, and from reading the Gospels, it seems clear that, that Jesus had this talent as well. And all the Orthodox Jews in his day wore a talent. Uh, so when the woman touched the hem of his garment, what she touched was one of these four tassels or the We'll get to that in just a minute. So a person uses the prayer shawl by reading the inscription that is embroidered into the garment. He is first just the first word on the, on the inscription. And I have that too on that same video, but if you got time for it. He kisses the first word on the inscription, and then the last word, and then he places the shawl over his head for a moment of reflection. Have you seen them? And they do that? Well, actually... This guy said they place it over their head and they cover up like that. Uh, then the cloth is placed on the shoulders. During times of deep prayer, the head is wrapped in the talent to shut off the worshiper from around the world. Many believe this is what Jesus had in mind in Matthew 6, 6, when he told his followers to enter into the closet and pray. So they would take that prayer shawl and wrap it all the way around their head so you could see their face and they could uh, pray to God. So a reference to talent, we can find it all throughout the Old Testament. Uh, if you go to 1 Samuel 24, 4. When Saul, when David cut off the bottom of Saul's garment, he cut off the uh, T-Z-I-T-Z-I-T. That's how you spell it. Tizit? I can't say it. Okay. Or tassel. That's easier. Okay. So if you look here. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thy hand, that thou mayest do to him as it should seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. So he cut off the talent, the tiz tizit on there. He wouldn't have noticed there's so many fringes around there. You wouldn't notice a little fringe, but there's four of these tizit on around. One for north, one for south, one for east and west. So any direction you go, you're supposed to be. Purposely, so he cut that off, and to show Saul, Saul's garment was seen as a symbol of his authority to reign as king. Skirt is the same word as border. Okay, when Samuel, and later on in uh, 1 Samuel 15, 26 and 27. I know I'm Gary's favorite. <laughs> and Samuel said unto Saul, uh, so Samuel was a was a prophet. You remember. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. And 
Samuel turned about to go away and laid hold before the skirt of his mantle and rent it. Okay, uh, doing so, he ripped the tassel from his garment. So maybe he had the same garment, maybe he only had two left after this. But anyway, he ripped the tassel from Samuel's garment. Samuel used this as a picture of what God was going to do with the kingdom of Israel. It was to be ripped out of Saul's hand. Okay, and then uh, if you go to 2 Kings 2, verse 13, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 13, when Elijah was taken up to heaven, Elijah was given, uh, Elisha was given Elijah's mantle. This was probably his talent or, that he had on the shawl that he had. And you see there, this is Elisha. When Elijah was carried up into heaven. He took off, up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. That was probably his talent or his shawl. The significance of his prayer shawl was not in the cloth, but in the tassels themselves. Uh, let's look at some facts about the... So I have a PowerPoint up there. All the way on the right is a tidzik, a tidzik, okay? Uh, all the way, yeah, you can't hardly see that. It's a, it's a strand, a lot of them are about this long, but there's one blue thread that goes all the way through them, okay? Uh, they're formed from four strands of thread, which are doubled, making eight strands. One of the strands, usually a blue strand, is much longer than the others. The tidzik, tiz, tiz, with its blue thread represents, first of all, that God is one. Uh, that God is a, a God of one God, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit, is one God. It's all one God. And the Messiah is not an appendage. The great God himself robbed himself in the flesh of Messiah through proper relationship with God and through the atoning of Messiah, Jesus, God's precious Lamb, who took away the sins of the world and as we look more at this tidbit, according to divine command, each tassel of the fringe was to have a blue thread. In Bible time, this shoe was one of the most expensive to produce. It was, uh, it was obtained from a species of snail called a murex. It took some 12,000 of these to fill a thimble with blue dye. The blue thread, or shamash, meaning servant, is wrapped around the other strands. From the messianic point of view, the shamash, or the blue thread, points to Messiah, Yeshua, the suffering servant, who is also the king, as the color of the blue indicates. While scarlet or red is the color of shed blood, blue is the color of the bloodline, the mark of royalty. Even today we refer to royalty as blue bloods. The helper is this thread that blue is from heaven and royalty, and it is the one that binds the rest together and gives it its meaning. We recognize this helper as Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God that Jesus sent here to be our helper, counselor, and our power. Those, those are tied in a series of five knots. I don't know if you can see. You can count one, two, three, four, five knots in that, right? Can you see the five knots? Uh, with a certain number of windings from the longer string increase, increase with each knot. The five knots represent the Torah, or the five books of the law, the Torah is identical to the first five books that are in this Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Between the five knots, there are four windings. In the first, the string is wound seven times, the second, eight times, the third, 11 times, the fourth, 13 times. These windings are significant to the Jew. Each letter of the alphabet has a numerical value. The first three windings, the number 7 plus 8 plus 11 equal 26, and that is the number equal to the Hebrew value of the name for God. Can we flip that PowerPoint down a couple? Next one. Tetragamathon, I can't say that either. Uh, in the four-letter Hebrew word, the name of the biblical God of Israel, the four letters represent from right to left are Yah, Hey, uh, sorry. Yah, hey, wah, he. While there's no consensus about the structure, the name forms Yahweh. Yahweh, that's how you get the word 
Yahweh, and it's tetragrammaton. Has anybody ever heard that before? No. That's how you. That's what that says up there in, in the Hebrew language. Okay. Okay. So that's how. We, that's how the word. You see how Yah. He wa he comes up. There's no good pronunciation for Yahweh in the English language. That's how it comes up with that. Uh, Thirteen referred to the attributes of God. Remember, we had the last one was last knot had thirteen strands in it uh, that were believed to be uh, possessed. Another interpretation is if you add the five knots with eight strands, you get the number thirteen. The numerical value of the word for tassel is six hundred. Add these numbers together and you get 613. That is the number of laws that are found in the Torah or the first five books of the Bible. There are 365 thou shalt nots and 248 thou shalts, as our text says, that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of God. That was in verse 38. The tassels on the border of a man's garment were there to be consistently reminding him of his relationship to God and God's law. Since they were to be on the four corners of the garment, no matter which way he turned, he would be reminded of the law and his responsibility to God. These verses reveal important facts about the talent. They can help us understand what was so special about the hem of his garment. Uh, I'll show you why God told the Israelites to wear the talent. It would be like uh, for us to uh, it would be like for us to see that we need to re some reminders from time to time too. Uh, Let's look at this uh, verse 40 in Deuteronomy 15. The prayer shawl with its talent was a reminder to the relationship with God. Deuteronomy 15, 40. That you may, this is what it says, that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. But before that, it, it told why you had the him, the tassels or the fringe around the, the garment. The, the Jews were to wear the tassels on the garment as a constant reminder of the relationship with God. The word your in these verses signifies a personal relationship. Verse, uh, let's see, your. Uh, he will say more, uh, let's see, we're always to remember that they were, who they were, and what was expected of them. The garments were a constant reminder they were they were a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We look up to Exodus 19 and 6. It says, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy, it's talking to the Israelites, a holy nation. These are the words which shall speak unto the children of Israel. He told them that, and that, that was a reminder to them when they looked at that. Uh, they were in a faith relationship with Jehovah God, and they were constantly reminding themselves of this truth. The blue in the garment was the color of heaven. It was there to remind them of their high, heavenly calling above all others. The Jews came to believe that they were saved by keeping the law. In fact, the Hebrew inscription around the neck of the talent reads, Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who makes us holy with commandments and commanded us to wrap ourselves in the we have this reminder too salvation is not about what you do it's about who you know we're not made holy by commandments but holy by the blood of Jesus Christ if you look up Ephesians 1 7 it says in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace so we're not saved by the commandments but by his grace we're saved through faith salvation is about being a personal faith relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is not keeping rules, but it rests totally on grace and faith alone. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So don't want you to get confused. We don't, we're not saved by commandments. We're saved by faith, by grace through faith. So the tassels on the four corners of the garment reminded the Jews that they were required to obey the Lord no matter which way they turned. They would see the tassels and instantly be reminded of their obligation to keep his commandments. We think of the commandments, we think there's only 10. Like I said, there's 613. They were to be reminded of that. 
And we need to be reminded too, we're not saved by keeping the commandments, uh, but we prove our love to God by keeping the commandments. We're not saved by them, but we help show our love for God by keeping the commandments. In John 14, 15, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And John 14, 21 says, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest, my, manifest myself to him. We don't need a prayer shawl or tassels on our clothes to remind us that we have to do right and live right. When a person receives Christ, they're indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and he enters in a life that changes his life. He said he'd make us a new creature. Uh, the redeemed child of God will not be perfect, but will be different. And he'll desire to live right and get closer to God. As we go on with the study here, in Numbers 15, 39, it, shall, it says, It shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that ye seek not your own heart and your own eyes after which you go whoring. The Jews were reminded that they had an obligation to separate themselves from evil and to walk in the ways of God. The idea of keeping the commandments speaks to external obedience. The idea expressed in this verse is, is internal obedience. The Jews were to conform to the will of God and the ways of God both internally and externally. They were to obey the outside and on the inside. They were to do the will of God from their heart. And that's what God wants us to do today. It was possible for a person to keep the letter of the law and violate the spirit of the law. They might do everything the law says, but hate every minute of it. They might manifest complete external obedience of the, of the law and all the while break the law with the attitude and the affections of the heart. God, God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, it says in the Bible, but God looks at the heart. He knows our thoughts are far off. Many people seem to think that since they've prayed a prayer and joined a church, they're free to do as they please and to live as they want. Not so. The Lord expects his people to live separate, holy lives, both internally and externally. I think in Romans it, it says, uh, uh, I can't think of the verse. It says, God forbid. If you want, if you want to live in, I can't, I misquoted the verse so bad. It says, uh, should we continue in sin and let grace abound? God forbid. So God's telling us you can't live like the devil and, and, and depend upon grace. You have to have the right heart for God, and that's what he wanted his people to be. Uh, there it is. God, uh, Romans 6, 2. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We, we shouldn't want to sin. He, when God saves us, he changes our want to. We don't want to sin anymore. And when we do sin, we should feel convicted about it. I think in Hebrews 12, it says, uh, God chastens the one he loves. You know, if he doesn't chasten you, it, he says, you, you're a bastard child, right? Not None of his. So if we sin and, and don't have uh, the chastisement of God or, 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 or feel a uh, need to repent, uh, you need to examine yourself and see where you stand. So there it is, Hebrews 12, 8. But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. So that's, that's how we can help look at ourselves and, and see where we stand when we do sin. You know, we all sin, whether it be thoughts or deeds or whatever we do, and we need to repent. We need to keep a, a, a short account with God and, and keep prayed up and ask him to forgive us. And, and if we're not chastised when we do sin, we need to, it, it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 13, to examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. Uh, in Numbers 15.41, it says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. The tassels on the garments were there to remind them that they were a special people. They had been purchased to the Lord by the blood of thousands of lambs. They'd been redeemed from the bondage and released from their slavery. They were never to forget what the Lord had done for them in Egypt. The tassels reminded them that God had been faithful to them. He led them out, fed them in the desert, and blessed them above all nations. They would remember that He brought them in in order to bring He brought them out in order to bring them in. The tassels reminded them that they were part of God's eternal plan. The tassels on the garment were reminded that they were people of the Lord. They were never to forget that fact. 
we also need to remember that today. We must never forget the terrible price that was paid to redeem us all. We must never forget that God robbed himself in humanity, dwelled among men, and died on the cross to secure our redemption. We must never forget he rose from the dead on the third day, ascended back to heaven, and sits as our intercessor today. We must never forget that he's coming back to get us someday, take us home to be with him in heaven. And I think it's getting closer and closer to that day that we can see the things around us. We must never forget who we are, what we are, why he saved us, and where he's taken us to be with him someday in glory. Isn't that great promise? When the woman at the, with the issue of blood came from behind Jesus and touched the tassels of his garment, she was touching more than a prayer shawl. She was embracing the promise of Malachi 4 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness rise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So he, he promised healing uh, when we touch it. He might not heal us physically, he'll heal us spiritually and give us a, a, a life, an eternal life to be with him forever. What a great promise. She was looking for healing in his wings or his border. She looked upon Jesus and she believed he was who he claimed to be. She saw him as the Messiah. And just like Ruth, she was asking the heavenly Boaz to spread his skirt over her. Can you go to Ruth 3.9? He said, Who art, who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread thou for thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. The skirt is the same word that's translated border. She was doing what the psalmist did. And this is the last one to look up. Psalm 91, verse 1 through 7. This is a great psalm for all of us. Ready? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the air that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but, in, but it shall not come nigh thee. Wow, what a great promise, and what a great scripture to remember that we can trust in God. He's got our back. He's got, our, uh, he, he's got us covered. She was asking to come under the shelter the, the woman with the issue was asking to come under the shelter of God's wings. Can you get the picture? Wing, wings is the same as border. Can you get the picture? When she touched the tassel of the hem of his garment, it was the same as touching him. She looked at him by faith, and when her faith touched his grace, she was healed. She was claiming her right as a daughter of Abraham, looking to her Messiah and trusting him to deliver her from her situation. She was claiming the promise of the word of God and resting on the grace of God. We too can touch the garment of God. We can come under the shelter of his wings. We can enjoy his salvation. If you're not walking in obedience, whether externally or internally, you can touch the hem of his garment today. If there's a problem and burdens in your life and you need help, come and touch the hem of his garment today. That's where we find peace and hope. You don't need to get a talent. I thought that'd be interesting to learn about the prayer shawl. You don't need a prayer shawl to touch Jesus. He's just a prayer away. Amen. Okay, so that's our lesson tonight. And if you'd like to show that, I think we've got a few minutes left. If y'all like to see how they make it there, uh, go to 17 minutes. And if we got time, we'll talk, we'll talk about that little kid. I think, I think you passed it up. I don't know anything about this, this ministry, but I do know about the, the children of Abraham. Okay. So can you turn on the... So they're looking for those murex. Okay, that was the, the 
kid that with uh, with the blue strand. So maybe I can talk. So they took uh, took these Murex and they crush them. And it takes about twelve thousand of them to make a, a timber pull. And they open it up. And uh, hope you don't get grossed out. It's like their gut. Okay, okay, stop. Yeah, I'm sure that what uh, uh, I would believe is 
he had his own kind of a, a, of a way of tying it. And, and when somebody would come over and say in the, in the Bible and touch the corner yeah, of the before the we did but the they were saying that you're touching there. me and trying to identify with your identity. Your truth is our truth. That's and even to this day, it's yeah. a beautiful custom.